So this is a brand new Android TV streaming box supporting quad-core CPU, 4 gigs RAM, yes, 4 gigs RAM, 32 gig storage, supports Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, full Netflix 4K certification, supports AV1, has Wi-Fi 6, supports Bluetooth, has built-in Ethernet, has built-in full-size USB ports. To get all of that in a package like this, I really think this box could be something special for the year 2024. Let's open that up. In fact, okay, so we can see this is the G1 box from Kinhank. We can see on the front here we have a power button. We've got some LEDs here for the power, for reset, for network. On the side here we, we have two USB 2 ports as well as micro SD. On the back here we can see we have AV out, we have HDMI out, we have Ethernet. I do think this is 100 meg but I will double check. We have optical out and we have the power input. This side we have nothing. And underneath that we have some ventilation. I will put the specs up on the screen, but you can see guys, with all of those certifications, with the Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, with 4K Netflix, this box really seems to have everything already built in. That's the box there. Comes with a decent size HDMI cable. They also bundled in a good size ethernet cable, so I definitely appreciate that. We have the power adapter, so I'm guessing I'm gonna have to use adapter here in the UK which they do actually bundle in the box. So again, we really do appreciate these uh, small touches. And lastly, we have the remote control, which looks very familiar. In fact, if I compare this to the on remote control, we, we can see it's actually identical. So that's everything you get inside the box. Let me now plug this in and let's take this new box for a spin. Okay, so I was able to configure my standard Google account and log in. And we're now looking at the all too familiar Android TV, or I guess it's going to be moved to Google TV home screen. So this video is going to be an initial impressions, first look at this box because there's just so many things to look at. I just want to give you guys a quick review, a quick overview that if you purchase this box today, it is available in UK, USA, worldwide. What can you expect if you get it? Well, firstly, let's talk about Wi-Fi because that's something that everybody's always asking on a box. What kind of Wi-Fi speeds can we get? How good is the Wi-Fi chip? Well, this is running Wi-Fi 6 or it supports Wi-Fi 6 and we can see in my house we can easily push over 540 meg downstream. I mean it has to be one of the fastest Wi-Fi speed tests I've ever done on any device including the Nvidia Shield. Now obviously benefit of Nvidia Shield is it does have a gigabit port and I have confirmed this box has 100 meg Ethernet. But that speed there, 537 meg, is fantastic. Let's do that one more time to make sure it wasn't a fluke or a one-off anomaly. Now we can see definitely in the Wi-Fi test, this box has very, very good Wi-Fi speeds. And we can see with 545 meg downstream, that's even enough for 8K gaming or streaming. Okay, let's talk about streaming. So let's press home. The remote control does feel very nice in the hand. It's got a good feel to it. Has these four media buttons at the bottom, which I'm gonna hopefully remap and see if I can launch a custom launcher or something else. Now talking about streaming, let's just confirm that with those certifications, for example, in Prime Video, can I actually watch 4K Prime? And we can see there on the top right, it is supporting 5.1 with UHD. So those certifications are absolutely valid. Let's also have a look on Netflix. Let's open that up. And we can see on Netflix, we do get HD Netflix. Now the package I'm actually on only supports HD, which is why we're not seeing UHD, but definitely we can see this box has the correct Netflix certification because if you didn't have that, the maximum you can stream at is I think 480p. But definitely with this box, we can see with those Netflix 4K certifications, it will support Netflix at the highest resolution, as long as you've got the uh, appropriate um, package. Let's press home. Let's do a quick test on uh, YouTube. Here we can see YouTube does support maximum 4K. If I bring up the stats, we can see it's streaming this uh, 4K footage some nature content and so far we have zero drop frames 
So super nice, super crisp picture. Let's fold that a bit. Let's look at the device um, settings. Let's go down into device preferences. Let's go to storage. And we can see out of the box, we've got 26 gigs of available storage. So, you know, a far cry from what we get on these Amazon devices, even the Fire TV Cube. Here we can see we have 26 gigs of free storage where you can download your favorite applications. You can download games, utilities, streaming applications. All of that can be downloaded. Now, because the box has standard size USB ports, I can very easily plug in a USB stick and in a couple of clicks, I can also expand the storage. So, so that process to expand storage is very, very easy on these Android TV devices. Now let's talk about side loading. So on a brand new device, how do we enable side loading? If I go back to the settings, click on about, let's go down to where it says build. If I press the select button there, so we can see you get the standard. You are now a developer. I can go back. And now, for example, if I try to open up a downloader, let's click on allow. Let's make a quick connection to my website. Let's try and do a test download and see what happens. So this is me effectively side loading an application. Could be any application. Give that a second. And we can see you get this message here telling you that security has blocked this. But all I need to do is click on settings and just say that downloader is now allowed to install applications from any source online. So anything you want to side load, your streaming applications, games, utilities, all of that can be done directly on this box. Now, custom launchers, I know lots of you are a big fan of, very, very easy on Android TV devices. Here, for example, I'm using the Project IV launcher. One click on my remote control, I can press the home button. That will instantly launch the custom launcher. And the application that I launched now, if I open up the Play Store, when I press the home button here, so three, two, one, instantly we're taken back to the custom launcher. If I go back to the speed test, just to show you again, that doesn't matter which application you open, anything you do on your device, as soon as you're finished, I'm just waiting for that speed test to start again because uh, I really am impressed with these speeds. I've even seen it go as high as 600 and, um, well, there you go, okay. Okay, so if I now press the home button, we can see instantly we are taken back to the custom launcher. So if that's your thing, you'll have no issues using any custom launcher on this Android TV box. Third party streaming, I'm sure lots of you are interested in that. Absolutely no issues with this streaming box. Everything is super quick. Everything loads properly. I can click on content. I can browse stuff. I can link it to RD. Everything is working exactly how you would hope on this Android TV box. So third-party streaming, third-party applications like this, absolutely no problem. Okay, so wrapping up this initial impressions video, and as I said before, guys, I will be making more videos on this box, but I'm extremely impressed with it. So for under $100, you've got a box with quad-core CPU, four gigs RAM, super fast Wi-Fi 6, all of the Netflix 4K certifications, Dolby Vision, Dolby Audio, Bluetooth, Ethernet, even though the Ethernet is only 100 meg, if you are looking for that consistent, reliable connection, 100 meg is more than enough even for your 4K streaming. Remote control works absolutely fine, has all of the functions that you need. You can remap some of these media buttons if you want to. And it also has a built-in IR blaster, so you can actually control your other audiovisual equipment you'll have no problems doing that. You can very easily expand the storage using those two built-in USB ports. You also have the optical out if you're looking for the best quality digital audio. So I think the G1 really does tick many, many boxes. And as I've said before, in the Android TV space, you've got the ultra cheap boxes like the Onbox, which is not even universally available. It's only really available in USA, but you've got the cheaper side with those kind of 20, 25, $30 boxes. Then you've got the other side of the spectrum, which is NVIDIA Shield, which is 150, 200, or depending on which version you get. So I do think there's a massive opportunity at the $100 price point where you can get all of these features. You're not looking for a cheap box, but you don't necessarily want all of the power of the NVIDIA Shield. Maybe you're not interested in gaming or emulation. You're looking for something in between. And for that, 
I definitely think this box is worthwhile checking out. It is available on Amazon USA in Amazon UK. I will leave all of the links in video description. I've also got two of these boxes to give away. So I'll be creating some kind of competition in the next day or so. So definitely look out for that. Make sure you are subscribed so you know exactly when that competition goes live. Do leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this initial impressions video. And I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.